in life if you ask what comes first knowledge or love i would say it is love that comes first but then knowledge follows and where does it culminate it culminates back into love so in the vishva roopa darshana seeing this whole universe as part of oneself there is ultimate knowledge seeing everything in terms of oneself is now culminating into bhakti yoga or devotion or love the knowledge that doesn't turn into love is incomplete the more you know something you really fall in love with that you have to only then it means that you know it knowing the self is falling in love with the self knowing anyone you fall in love with them there are many movies about um, you know the criminals and people who have fallen in love with criminals why they come to know about the criminal and they find that inside of a criminal also there is a good person it's a circumstances that made them the way they are but deep inside them they find that innocent child i would say inside every culprit there is a victim hiding and inside every victim there is a child that is hiding you surpass the layer of culprit and then the victim you will see the pure being which is there to play its role an innocent being most lovable being so knowledge has to culminate in love to find its fulfillment to find its fullness and that's exactly what happened to arjuna after he saw the glorious form through his eye of yoga the special vision you know the way scientists see the universe is different from a layman who sees the universe to a scientist the whole universe is atoms molecules just vibrations wave functions from a scientist vision the world appears energy and matter and such special i was gifted to arjuna by lord shri krishna to see the universe all in terms of himself beyond time and space but that knowledge we could not hold for too long he says no i want to come back to my simple self and so you show me your simple form he pleads i don't want to be the quantum mechanics anymore i want to be in the classical chemistry i want to see you as a normal human being like my friend that i always knew i want to sit with you talk to you interact with you like a human being don't show me this so scary aspect of yours is magnificent yet scary is so astounding yet unpalatable 
don't show me that i want now to see the most pleasant friendly normal human form of yours and so krishna agreed okay now what this has created a sense of awe sense of awe is the foundation for both yoga and devotion while sense of awe takes you to yoga devotion leaves you in a sense of wow small things appear very charming insignificant appears as uh, something great something irresistible something more beautiful this is the nature of law you would see you know when grandmothers and grandfathers fall in love with their grandchildren they are anyway in love with their grandchildren they start describing oh you know he put his thumb in the mouth like that and then showed me you all something small things which others may find it silly but when you are in love that appears to be something magical mystical so arjuna was left in a state of wow through knowledge no knowledge as i said is incomplete unless it culminates into bhakti so now the bhakti yoga begins starts with the question from arjuna arjuna vacha evam satata yuktaye भक्तास्वाम पर्युपासते ये चाप्यक्षरम्यक्त तेजवाच मैयावेश्य मनो ये मित्युक्ता उपासते श्रद्धया पर Lord Krishna has referred to the divine in all the three persons: the first person, second person, third person. First, he said, "Take refuge into that which is in the heart of everybody." the lord the ishvara is in the heart of everyone and he is making the whole world go around take refuge in him he says and then and many times he says come on take refuge in me first person from third person to first person could be very confusing in the second chapter he tells him you are the self though you hear such words it doesn't really mean anything to you because when you are in misery when you are so attached to things around you someone says you are god it doesn't make any sense doesn't even enter into your mind when krishna is saying he for arjuna the third person is also a little difficult to comprehend and the first person is even difficult say i am the take refuge in me so as usual arjuna very confused ask me now what is better to worship the unmanifest which is not seen anywhere god brahman or different things but people say do i worship that and if people worship what will happen to them or should i think you are god and should i worship you which is the right thing to do there are two type of people one who worship see god in all the creation 
the tree is worshipped as ashwat narayan people tree cows are considered sacred mountains are worshipped as sacred this is in all the aboriginal um, religions of the world aboriginal people worship the rivers mountains sun moon these are all manifest form of the same divinity guru gods adoring all these manifest forms some people experience devotion and some others see the unmanifest god who has no form no location which is is beyond the comprehension of all the five senses as a concept in the mind of universal somebody universal being somewhere out there maybe in the heaven which is the right thing to do who is better who would experience the deep love then lord krishna says maya veshya mano ema nitya yukta upasate one who has put his mind into me with faith shraddhaya parayopita te me yukta tamamata with faith unshakable faith i think he is better says because he has something solid in front of him is something that he can hold on to because see love needs a support at aadhar you can love a person to be in love with a space is very difficult empty space so the best yogi the best bhakta is one who has steadfast faith in me put the the whole mind in me maya veshya mano e manitya yukta upasate upasate means who comes near sits near understand see when there is a distance there is always chance for miscommunication misunderstanding and the distance is from your own mind not from others if you feel distant from someone whether guru or god it is not god's or guru's mistake it's your own fault because you are not mentally not doing upasana upasana means what sitting close coming close it's only one sided usually say love is two sided no here it's only one side from your side you feel close that's it period there are no words to explain that it doesn't matter what the response from the other side upasana means from your side you go sit close feel close and that's it you don't question whether i am close or not maya veshya mano ye ma nitya yukta upa yukta nitya yukta means what every day united every moment united you may feel that unity all the time shraddhaya and having faith because faith is something that can get shaken in spite of being shaken doesn't disappear stay stronger is real faith the faith that disappears by little shaking is no faith at all shraddhaya paryopita stay fast you know when you put a po- when you build a building then you do have the load testing engineers go and put a process called load testing does this roof can take the load they put a lot of weight on that 
dead weight and dead load and see whether this building is strong enough or not. In olden days when they put the uh, tambus, these pendals, when they put the poles, they would hold the pole and shake the pole, see whether the pole is shaking or not. It's strong enough to hold the roof or not. Life poses many situations where your faith could be shaken. Faith in yourself, faith in the divine and faith in the goodness of people around. Three type of faith. All three could be shaken. When they get shaken, do you lose it? Do you slip into depression? Then that's no faith at all. In spite of being shaken, the faith continues to grow stronger, then that's the right track. Then you are in the right track. The mind is in the right track. That's maya veshya manoyema. The mind with, with your mind immersed in me, connected with me, synchronizing with me, When your mind is in sync with the universal mind, the divinity, then no, everything flow. That's what your intuition is all about. It never fails. Nitya yukta upasate shraddhaya parayo peta stemi yukta tamamata That person is the one who is really connected. I feel he is better. Yitvaksharamanidheshyam avyaktam paryupasate Sarvatra gama chintyancha kutastha machalam dhruvam Sanniyam yendriyagramam sarvatra samabuddhayah Te prapnuvanti mameva sarvabhutai te ratah here comes the other side of the story. There are those who worship God as unseen, uninvisible, imperishable. God has three qualities, no? omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, correct? God is omniscient, he knows everything. Individuals cannot know everything. God knows everything. Omni, scient. If he is everywhere, then he can't be in one location. So he is everywhere. Omni, present, omnipotent, all powerful. These are the three main definitions of God. Yes. Those who worship this unmanifest, all pervading, all-powerful divinity which again with faith restraining their senses this is very important here when you have no desire to see hear or communicate through your senses, you are restraining your senses and getting into deep silence, deep meditation. You know, people say, oh, I had conversation with God. Unmanifest God is everywhere. How can he even converse with you? Then you must be different from him. If you are two, then it is not God. It's your own mind which is conversing with you. If God is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, why would he need to communicate with you? And who are you? You are not different from him. Correct? You are that. So here, those who really adore the unmanifest divinity, there is no words, 
and there is nothing you need to see or hear. You restrain all your senses. You don't want to touch, taste, smell or see even. Then you go in a deep state of Samadhi meditation. And Lord Krishna says, when you go to that space of fullness or nothingness, you still come to me only. Because I am that. I am not the body. I am the imperishable being. So when you restrain your senses and go deep in meditation, whom do you connect? You connect to that which is nothing but me. So they also come to me. And what do they do? They are doing... It's not, it, he, very interesting here. And very important to note. You are not just going into Samadhi and retriving with the senses. You are also engaged in working for the welfare of all the beings. Not just my community, my religion, my people, or my state, or my nationality. It says, one who is working for the welfare of all the beings, ceaselessly, and restraining the senses and connecting with that eternal emptiness or fullness deep inside me, restraining the senses, he also attains to me. He also reaches me. So one is just doing a service, but another is doing the service and really rejoicing. Sarva bhuta hite rata. Not what, what people like, but what is good for them. Do you see what I'm saying? We should make a distinction of this. Hita, that which is good, or Ishta, that which one likes. Someone likes something and, um, you know, you think it is service because they like it. No. You have to see whether it, they may like something, but is it good for them? No, again, who would decide what is good for anybody? I would say it is common sense. Not any religious doctrine. It is just common sense. One who is in service of all beings, willingly, not with an idea that I will get something doing this service, no. Or making service as your currency to gain some higher pleasure in the heaven. Many people do service so that they can, when they go to heaven, they get proper seat and proper accommodation up there. One lady told me, no, elderly lady in America, I've done all this service, hope I get a better accommodation when I go to heaven. But I'm not used to sleeping in new places. Will I be okay? <laughs> this was her question. I said, don't worry, you relax. <laughs> You'll feel at home there. There are people to take care of you. Not doing service for some brownie points or to get some benefit out there in the heaven or to get some name here in the society. No. You simply do it because you can't but do it. And you rejoice doing it. Such people attain to me only, he says. So dikata rastesham avyakta sakta chetasam avyakta higatir dhukkam dehavid bhiravapyate etu sarvani karmani mai sanyasya matparaha Ananyenevayogena maam dhyayanta upasate.
क्लेशोदिकतरस्तेषाम अव्यक्ताम सक्त चेतस पीपल हु वर्शिप द अनमैनिफेस्ट और इन लव विद द अनमैनिफेस्ट हैव लॉट ऑफ डिफिकल्टीज especially those who are body conscious who want something in this world who want to have a normal life who wants to um, you know who finds it difficult to restrain all the senses and be inward who are more body bound for such people it is very difficult to be in love with the unmanifest and that path of unmanifest devotion is filled with misery filled with difficulties though it is good its path it's not we're not saying that you don't reach you do reach but you reach after a lot of difficulties there are a lot of hurdles that would come on on the way avyatahi gatir dukham dehavi this this path this way of the unmanifest is filled with sorrow filled with misery and we find this strikingly in the world see those religions in the world which where people are worshiping god in the unmanifest form the history is full of bloodshed misery problem what happened to the jews in the world heart of misery even today see in the islamic world even the life of prophet muhammad filled with so much sorrow so much struggle it was not an easy journey for him it was not a journey where dance and music were there celebration were there it was a journey of hardship same with moses same with the sikh religion same with the arya samajis of the hindu same with taoos and shintoism while buddhism didn't have to face the hardship why they had lord buddha that was the form we should see here it is not that that path is bad no he is not saying you should not walk that path of unmanifest he says yes but if you are body conscious if your body bound this path of unmanifest worship is difficult and is filled with sorrow you will have to go through that but then finally you will definitely reach the same goal reach me there e tu sarvani karmani mai sanyasya matpara ananye naiva yoginam mam dhyayanto upasate ये तो सर्वाणी कर्माणी मई सन्यस्य मत परा नाउ ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द टेक्निक हाउ टू डू इट नाउ हाउ डू आई वर्शिप यू डू आई वर्शिप यू मीन्स आई कम विद आरती प्लेट एंड कीप डूइंग आरती टू यू हाउ डू यू डू दैट से ये तो सर्वाणी कर्माणी मई सन्यस्य मत परा वन हु लेट गो ऑफ ऑल कर्मा 
of all actions, past, present, future, every type of karma, my sannyasya, letting it go, offering that to me, and being centered. You, know, you can get centered only when you let go of all the karmas. You are hanging on to this is my karma, then you are not getting centered. The moment you centered, you are in deep bhakti. That is bhakti. Or bhakti is that which takes you away from all the karmas. Bondage of karma. Love lifts you up above all the karmic bondage. Being with me, one who does not think about the karma, does not hold on to the karma, but just offers all to me, without ananye naiva yogena, this is very important, you know. It's not a part-time devotee. You know, the devotees were part-time devotees. When the problem comes, you remember devotion. No. Other times they have other interests. Mind goes into other things. Me, me, me. But when some problem comes, oh God, 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 God. When exams come, people line up from Siddhi Vinayaka temple. Only exam times, you know. All temples become very busy during exams or even before results. This is part-time devotion. Or you want some comfort, then you say, oh, I have surrendered everything. Convenience, devotees of convenience. Yes, I want whatever I want, so my, me and my want is more important. That is not yoga. Ananye naiva yogina. I want nothing. There is no other. There is no other to want or to go or to know. You know, desire to know, desire to have, these both have to be in one place. That is Ananya. That everything converging into that one, that is Ananya. Your entire personality, your desire, your wishes, and I mean, that's the main thing, right? Your actions, your wishes, everything centered around one. That is ananya naiva yoga. What happened if you do that? If I have ananya bhakti, there is no other, only one single minded devotion when it comes to you. What will happen to you? The next person. Tesha maham samudharta mrityu samsara sagarat bhavami na chirat partha. Maya Veshita Chetasam. Those whose minds are fixed on me, them I will lift them above the sansara, about this the world of conflicts, the world of cravings and aversions, the world of death. This relative world is the world of death. Here nothing stays, everything dies. Here the feelings come and go, feelings die. Your ideas, opinions, they come and they go. Your likes and dislikes change, they all die. This world is of death. But what is immortal is that being which your innate self knows. 
So what is that which is beyond this world of death? That is me and I will lift you to that state if you are totally focused on me. Tisha Maham Samudhata, those people who have Ananya Bhakti as unflinching, one pointed, one focused love for me, I'll lift them above the ocean of death. Ocean of Sansara. And Bhavami. Dachira Partha Maya Veshita Chetasam Oh my dear Partha, oh my dear Arjuna You be with me, you put your hundred percent into me Let your consciousness merge into me, let your mind merge into me Mai eva mana adhatsvam, mai buddhim niveshaya, nivasishya si mai eva, ata urdhvam na samshaya. These are two things that makes us feel separate, the mind and the intellect. These are the two things that prevail over your ego. And when ego, for it to sustain, it has to have the intellect and mind separate from everything. That's why people who are very egotistic, they can't feel the love. Because they, they have this wall around them, self-created wall. And this is what is uh, coming in the way of a harmonious relationship with anybody in any situation in the world, whether it's in the office or at home. Why you get into conflict? Because of what? Your intellect and your mind. Your mind here means your emotions. Though intellectually you find there is compatibility in a relationship, emotions don't match, then everything falls apart. Sometimes emotionally you are very much attracted to people but then the intellect says, no, this is not okay. Then also there is always a conflict. So while well, intellect creates conflicts and emotions end up in conflicts, it is the ego which is suffering. So here, Lord Krishna very clearly says, Mayeva mana adat, mai buddhim niveshaya. Okay, you are emotionally attached to somebody, but intellectually you are not getting the same thinking. You know, this is, this is a common saying in Gurukuls in ancient times. It said, how you should be with the Guru? Chayavat vased guru sannidhau. said, be like a shadow in Guru's presence. Be like the shadow. You don't have to ascertain yourself. I am somebody, you please notice me, give me attention. No. You are behind. Only when the light is behind, shadow is in the front. When there is light ahead, shadow can never be in the front. If you are turning away from the light, only then shadow looks big and it's in, the, in front of you. If you are facing the light, shadow is always behind. So on the path, be like a shadow. Can you be a nobody? I want to be this, I want to be... Head, I want to lead the team, I want to be in charge, I am the head, I am the head. This I am the head 
you are creating a wall and you become incommunicable with people around you being a nobody that is it mayev mana adatvam mai buddhim niveshya with the, with the masters of the ancient time you have to guess what they want you can't ask them what do you want what do you like you have to guess what they like and you have to quietly keep doing what you, what they want not go and ask them 100 questions <laughs> you know can i put this can i take this can i put a green carpet blue carpet nothing you do quietly you understand because you are in sync with the master's mind chayavat vase guru sannidho is why you have to be in the shadow of the like a shadow of the master so that you can tune yourself with what the master wants what the teacher wants this was the training in the ancient days and that's so you know you move into the knowledge you become that what you aspire So, mayeva mana adatva, may buddhim, keep your mind with me, so also your intellect. If you have put your intellect into me, if you have synced your intellect with mine, no doubt you will rise above. Nimashishyasi mayeva, atha urdvam na samshya. there is no doubt here cloud krishna is giving assurance because the intellect doubts okay i put my intellect what will happen will i achieve what they want will i raise above but that he needs assurance like you go to a doctor and the doctor says you take this medicine i give you guarantee for sure it your cold will go or your headache will go then you have confidence in taking it you do that the same confidence is building him giving him guarantee you know, today you, wa- you want to buy a refrigerator you want guarantee you want to buy a suitcase you want a guarantee you know hello if it breaks or something one year warranty two year warranty right anything you buy you get warranty right so you are given this assurance you will definitely rise up hmm. there is this story of a buddhist monk and he had a disciple and he had such a strong faith in the master the master said jump he will jump so when master was sitting one day and something happened he said you he said you just jump off the cliff and he, he jumped off a cliff and nothing happened to him he came back and master was shaken now i mean he was worried hey, how did you do that he said how what nothing happened to you then the disciple said you said jump by new you were with me so i just jumped but now you said you are shaken now that is making me shake <laughs> now i don't know whether i'll be able to jump again the second time so if your faith is so strong and if your mind is really put doesn't matter who the master was what he did or he doesn't do you will definitely rise above the the ocean of mrityu of death atha urdham na samshya mayeva mana adatva mai buddhim niveshaya nivashishyasi 
my if your intellect is attuned with me if it is with, in your intellect you, if i am there ni vashishyasi mai eva if it is in me athu urdvam na samsha you will rise above there is no doubt about it <laughs>